Countless champions have been crowned throughout the history of competitive Yu-Gi-Oh! But what about the underdogs, the dark horses, the decks that upon first glance make you question everything you thought you knew about the game? In this series, both MBT and myself will be showcasing some of Yu-Gi-Oh!'s wackiest unsung heroes. Each episode will feature new decks, new strategies, and the results will be unpredictable. You've seen the history of Yu-Gi-Oh!, but this is the history of Jank. If you want 5% off any singles or sealed product, click the affiliate links in the description and use code SEMO5. And clicking the TCG Player affiliate link before you shop helps support us to provide you with more amazing content. Folks, it's back. Now, for some of you, this deck is going to look pretty familiar. That's because we played it on an episode of History of Yu-Gi-Oh! In a lot of ways, Worms is one of the decks responsible for the creation of History of Jank in the first place. We would continuously run up against these decks that topped once or twice and have no place to put them. We couldn't really spend too much time talking about them because they weren't really a part of the metagame in the same way that the top tiers were. Certainly, we would have missed a lot by passing over this. Worms have actually been playable twice. In like 2014, I want to say as an Xyz engine in order to make rank fours using Zex and Yagan, and a short stint of playability as they were released in 2011. This is Robert Boyajin's list from May of that year, and boy is it something. It's a stun list, obviously. I mean, you can't look at 17 traps and not realize that some monkeys will be flipping, but it all revolves around the interaction between Worm Zex and Worm Yagan. This card on Normal Summon allows you to send a Worm Monster from your deck to the graveyard, and Yagan can Special Summon itself back from the graveyard if the only monster you control is Worm Zex. It's an impressively powerful resource loop that ends you on a Compulse that can then turn into two to decently statted monsters for follow-up plays. It's exceptionally easy to find because you're also playing three copies of Worm Carteros, and it allows you to play one of the craziest cards ever printed, W Nebula Meteorite. This card allows you to change all face-down monsters on the field to face-up defense position, procking your Yagan. Then during the end phase, flip all the light reptile monsters you still control back into face-down defense position, draw a card for each, and you can summon a level seven or higher light reptile monster from your deck, in this case, Worm King. This deck is is bonkers. And I'm not just saying it because I like the strategy. I think the deck had a real shot at being metagame relevant during the time that individuals were playing it. But unfortunately, I think that both a combination of a metagame that was very quickly eclipsing it, a really bad matchup spread against the threats that did populate the metagame, and an unwillingness to tinker with the individual lists themselves means that it never really got its day in the sun. For instance, in this list, I would probably cut our first card, Evil Dragon Ananta. This is one of the worst cards that has ever been playable. Look, it's got like nine heads, and if that wasn't enough, the thing around its chest has an additional head on it. This card requires you to banish all the reptiles from your graveyard. Its attack and defense is equal to the uh, number that you banish times 600, and at the end of your turn, you have to pop a card on the field, and that is a have to. They're playing two of them. There's a Birdman in here for undeterminable reasons. Uh, and honest, they are all lights. Worm Carteros searches Zex, but it's so slow, it's almost not worth considering. Double Worm King, just fear God, play one. Three Zex, three Yagan, one Book of Moon, a Dark Hole, a Reborn, double MST, triple Duality, double Bottomless, triple Dimensional Prison, Mirror Force, double Offering to the Snake DV. Boy, oh boy, is an Icarus attack welcome in a deck like this. Royal Oppression, double Seven Tools of the Bandit, very underrated this format. A Solemn Judgment, two Solemn Warning, and three W Nebula Meteorite in the side. We've got the Cypher Soldiers, the Cyber Dragons, the Jougans, double Knock, a Super Polymerization, two Chain Disappearance, two Chain Whirlwind. I was shocked at how playable this card was historically, and two, Rivalry of Warlords. At the end of the day, we are a reptile deck. The extra is full of a bunch of monsters we won't ever make, but I do want to draw your attention to the Worm Zero in case we ran into the mirror. I'll see you in the games. Oh, am I excited for today's episode. So avid viewers of both History of Jank and History of Yu-Gi-Oh! might notice that both decks that we are piloting today, this is not the first time we have piloted these decks. Both Joseph and I have played these decks in History of Yu-Gi-Oh! against other good decks, and a lot of you 
mention that, yeah, these decks should probably go into History of Jank. That might have been even before the series existed, but honestly, I don't remember at this point. But in any case, this is what we are bringing to today's duel. Uh, this deck is actually revered as being quite a threat during this time, but at the same time, like, this is Jank, right? Anytime you're playing a deck with Gear Town, Gadgetron, and then you're trying to summon, like, Malefic Dudes just to beat your opponent's face in, this deck is a clusterfuck. And so I am so happy that we get to play this in Jank, and hopefully we get to have some revenge and take down those pesky little worms. So let's do the card by card. We have one Ancient Gear Gadgetron Dragon. This is our uh, summon off of Gear Town. Gear Town, if it's sent to the graveyard, uh, destroyed and sent to the graveyard specifically, we can special summon an Ancient Gear from our hand deck or graveyard. This means that we set this face down, and if we set another card over it, it will be destroyed, meaning we are able to go ahead and activate that effect. We have a copy of Gale for Synchro Plays, and also having stuff can sometimes relevant against stuff like Stardust Dragon and the like. The reason the Gravekeepers are in here are solely just to be an anti-meta threat with all the other plant decks and crazy just bullshit going on at the time. So we have three Gravekeepers Commandant, three Descendant, three Recruiter, three Spy. This is really all we need. Commandant gets Necro Valley, Descendant can pop cards, Recruiter can get anything except for, I believe, Spy, and Spy can get anything and it's a 2k wall. Then we have the big boys. We have Malefic Cyber End and Malefic Stardust. Both of these can be special summoned by sending their respective monster from the extra deck to the banished pile, and basically they're just gigantic. Malefic Cyber End is a 4k attacker that, uh, when Malefics are out, they're the only ones that can attack, but who fucking cares? Cyber End is just gonna get in there and do a ton of damage, and Stardust is actually neat because it can protect Necro Value, which is very important in those specific graveyard-based matchups. It may not be super relevant against a deck like Worms, but there are some interactions with, like, Yagen and the like, and so we'll see if that comes up. That's it for the monsters, though. The spells, Dark Hole, Triple Gear Town, a Giant Trunade, one Gravekeeper Stele, two MST, Triple Necro Valley, a Nobleman of Crossout, and Nobleman of Extermination. For the traps, this deck was main decking Deck Devastation Virus. I kind of get it. All the Malefics are dark, and uh, with your Necro Valley up, the Gravekeeper Descendant, uh, this is Earth, actually, so just Descendant can get up to 2k, which means you can use this to get rid of all those pesky small monsters, and with Necro Valley up, they're not going to be able to come back if they're anything that would recur. Double D Prison, Mirror Force, Double Skill Drain, because obviously with Malefics, we don't care about any of this, Solemn Judgment, and Torrential Tribute. The extra deck is a bunch of stuff we are most likely never going to summon. The only reason we'll go in here is most likely Cyber End and Stardust. And then the side deck, Double Cypher Soldier, Double Sidra. We have two Effect Veiler, two Puppet Plant, a Reborn in the side, which is kind of weird, a Nobleman of Crossout, a third D Prison, Double Mirror of O's, and Double Starlight Road. So this is just big idiot beatdown, ladies and gentlemen. And this deck is hilarious. I can't believe this was actually competitively viable at one point in time, but uh, definitely a deck to be feared for sure. No one wants to be on the receiving end of a 4K Malefic Cyber End Dragon, but we'll just have to see what happens. So ladies and gentlemen, let's not make you wait any longer. It's time to duel. Joseph, it's so strange that we're actually nearing the end of, like, Synchro era in History of Jank. I guess, like, when we're not going format by format, we're kind of jumping all over the place. It just seems like it's going by way faster, but maybe it's because we're having so much fun playing these abominations. <laughs> this is definitely going to be a disaster. Um, I will say it is refreshing to be playing a deck that I already know. I can say the same thing. Uh, these are both decks that were featured in History of Yu-Gi-Oh! at one point because these are actually good decks to a degree, mm. right? But just because they're good doesn't mean that they're jank. It's not like FTK library, you know, bullshit or magical scientists. These are two decks that uh, do some unfair things, but by the conventional standards of regular Yu-Gi-Oh! in 2011, these decks are hot garbage. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's, that's true. Uh, this period in Yu-Gi-Oh!'s history is actually pretty weird. Um, weird post-Edison, like, January of 2011 to August of 2011. It's one of those periods in Yu-Gi-Oh! where, like, there are four or five really good decks, but no one's really clear how good they are or how much better they are than anything else, and there's not a lot of recorded tops during the period anyway. So as a result, we get stuff like this clearing events. It's like we love to say, back then you could top with anything. So let's shout the Patreon, so. build charters. Thank you for the support, buddy. Do you have the hand up? All right, give me one sec. Okay, I've got a number in mind. Okay, I'm gonna go with odd. It is even. Fuck! 24, because X is the 24th <laughs> letter of the alphabet. <laughs> Fine. I was thinking for some reason you were going to go even, so I tried to go odd to preempt that, and oh, I guess I got punished for it. You're so. trying to next level me. I was, and as we've seen in progression <laughs> series, that does not work out for me, so good luck, sir. Uh, draw your sixth card. Yeah, you know, I'm gonna. Oh, that did not help. All right, maybe this will. We'll go duality. Sure. 
Well, you yeah, know. Okay. All right. Uh, I will take a worm cactaros. It, it's not Zex, but it's uh, one step away from a Zex. It's not really because you simply will not attack it now is the problem. <laughs> All right, let's go. That's one. assuming you said it, of course. It uh, could be anything. Like, literally could be anything. Literally anything. Uh, so you are right. I'm not going to attack it because I'm going to Nobleman of Cross out it instead. Oh, wow. That is really funny. Uh, I'm going to activate W Nebula Meteorite. No! <laughs> God damn it. Bye. Woo! <laughs> All right, uh, so uh, Meteorite rearing its ugly head once again. This, every time I read this card, I am so astonished that this card was printed and Worms were not the best deck in the format. This card is crazy. I mean, it really doesn't do that much. So we get what, the X here? Uh, and then I sure hope he doesn't fucking die. We will have to see. I mean, there's only, uh, there's one shot. I will activate Necro Valley. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I will normal descendant. Do you need a Necro Valley and a monster for Royal Tribute? I do. I think I have to book your guy here on summon. <laughs> God damn it, fine. Had every fucking answer. All right, I, I have a back row. Go ahead, please. Woo! I'll resolve the effect of W Nebula Meteorite. Yes, you will. So you're going to set your boy down. You draw a card and then you get to special summon a level seven or higher light reptile monster from Boom, your deck. There he is. There is the boy. I swear to God, I'm just going to say this now. If you evil dragon Ananta me again like you did in history, <laughs> I'm going to fucking rage quit. Yeah, I don't think it's uh, really going to do anything here with zero monsters in grave. Uh, but <laughs> let's uh, let's get some monsters onto the field, right? We'll go for Zex here. Oh, thank God. You did you did that first. All right, oh, thank you. Oh, no. Oh, rather than flip up the Carteros. Uh, well, you know, uh, that's uh, that is what it is. Uh, so I will send a reptile worm type monster to the graveyard. Shit, do I even want to send Yagan? I think I'd prefer to draw it. Uh, let's send another Carteros. Sounds good. Uh, I will... <laughs> I'll set one back to you. All right, if it makes you feel any better... Oh, that actually helps me tremendously. I will special summon Malefic Cyber End Dragon. Jeez. Okay, we're gonna solemn that. No! Stop! I need this! All right, stand by me. Thank the Lord. MST. Ugh. No! And now, <laughs> field spells. with nothing to stop you from preventing me from banishing monsters, we're going to banish all the reptiles no! from my graveyard. I just said this! <laughs> to summon evil dragon uh, Anatana. Oh, this isn't even that good, is it? Uh, okay. Uh, it's just big. It can. It puts me on a clock. He's a 24. 24, yes. Uh, I am going to normal worm Carteros. Okay. Uh, I will... <laughs> Yes, I will. Uh, activate Gen X Ally Birdman to put Carteros back in hand. Sure. Uh, battle. <laughs> 24 Okay, 14. so uh, that's fine. Gores? Really? No, I'm joking. I would, I would appreciate it. <laughs> I fucking it wish. Because now at end phase, I have to destroy my own Birdman. Thankfully, there is a downside to this card. I'm going to fucking lose to this again, aren't I? I'm going to fucking lose to this again, aren't I? Oh my god. Okay, so I know you have Carteros in hand. I imagine you have another monster that does jack diddly shit. I will set a card. <laughs> go ahead. All right, stand by main. I'll just go to battle and try to hit. Okay, thankfully, I drew Dimensional Prison. Okay, good. We don't have to worry about this guy destroying my entire field again. Back to you. I'll draw. Uh, well, uh, Necro Valley. Yeah, there it is. I will special summon Malefic Stardust Dragon. There it is. Uh, we will try to get in here. I know it's Carteros. Uh, it is. Or I do I? grab Gex. Okay. Zex is on the field. That's the end of my turn. I'll draw for turn. Stand by main. Dark hole. Well, this is, uh, as you could probably figure out, not Stardust Dragon. Nice drawing the dark hole after you shuffled it back off the duality. That's fine. No problem. No problem. We'll go Zex now. Zex is fine. Uh, I'm going to send Yagan. Go for Yagan here. Sure. 
And we'll try to get in for 18. And I'll take it. Oh, I'm cheating. Necro Valley's on the field. Oh, yes, you are. See, it's so Wait. funny with Necro Valley. It's just a pretty backdrop. I just think of it as booster gravekeepers. It has no other effect. Wait, so... am I cheating? What year is this? 2011? Oh, do we need to look up the proper ruling for Necro Valley? We do because Yagan is summoning itself. Okay, so the structure deck Merrick printing of Necro Valley states, all gravekeepers gain 500 attack and defense. Cards in either player's graveyards cannot be removed from play. Cards in either player's graveyards cannot be affected by card effects except for their own effects. Yagen works! Woo! I hate, I hate Necro Valley. <laughs> I hate Necro Valley too. All right. Uh, we'll draw. That does nothing. All right. Game two. We did Woo! it! <laughs> Yeah, that went about as according to plan as it could have. Uh, drew the Gadgetron Dragon, too, by the way. Uh, fantastic card that does absolutely nothing when it breaks in your hand. But that is the way the game goes. I get to go first. Could make a big difference here. And uh, hopefully there are no Meteorites or Anantas in my future. Good luck, sir. Good luck to you, too. Oh! Well, uh, I can't even tell if this is a good or a bad hand, truly. I can't either, because I have yet to see my sixth card, and uh, as a result of that, I... Oh, there we go. Thanks, Dueling Book. All right. Main one. Uh, this is okay. I'm going to set one, two, three. Over to you. That was the worst draw in my deck. Okay. Uh, Zex. I have no response. We'll send you again. Uh, Yagan effect in graveyard. That is fine. All right. Well, we're chilling. Uh, let's go to combat. I'll walk in here. I'll deprison this. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Uh, second main, I'll set one back to you. Okay. Draw. Uh, in my main phase one, let's nobleman of extermination that back row. Ah, uh, it's a trap. It's, uh, seven tools. Seven tools. Okay. That's fine. Uh, so I know you have Yagan. You had multiple seven tools. I did. This card's crazy, this format. It is crazy. Very uh, underrated as well. Uh, I'll just flip Recruiter. Uh, Yagan is 1,800 defense. So we'll just go to battle. I'm going to hit this just to get this up. Whoop. Get him back. All right. So I'll take six. This goes back to hand. Fine. Uh, second main, I'm going to set a card. Could be anything. And then I'm going to... Set another card, oh, trigger God. Gear Town. Yep. Let's bring out the boy so we don't brick with him like we did game one. There he is. Uh, then I will set a card, could be anything, and I will set another card. And uh, let's just flip this Necro Valley now. Go ahead. Oh my God, what a turn. Uh, first, let's knock what we know is the recruiter. Okay, that's pretty good. Uh, and then, oh geez, uh, we'll set one and pass. Draw. That's not bad. It would have been better if I had Recruiter. Uh, let's go for Descendant. That's a card. Um, so what am I afraid of that you have set? The worst case scenario is you have another Yagen, because if you do, then that means that when it's flipped, that I'm screwed. So to try and circumvent that, I'm going to activate Deck Devastation Virus. Ooh. Well... Uh, that is the end of the game. Ooh, double again. What else is going? Uh, Carteros. Carteros. And a and very a good card reward. under Necro Valley. <laughs> under Necro Valley. Let's go, Gadgetron. Woo! Okay. All right, 3K. Things are going to have to get real good Can I see that card, quick. sir? Can I see that card, sir? Uh, do, do you have to? <laughs> <laughs> okay, draw. Um, yeah, we can just probably wrap this one up. Let's space the back row. Yep. And, oh, actually, that doesn't wrap it up. Uh, that is annoying. Well, in any case, we'll bring out Malefic Cyber End because it's funny. <laughs> yeah. Uh, unfortunately, Malefics are the only monster that can attack. All right, you're down to 1,000. See it. Okay, it's Depriz, but I don't think it actually does anything, because once I Depriz the Cyber End, you can get in with Gadgeltron. That is correct. Oh, God, that was rough. <laughs>
Deck Devastation Virus. Is that that how you like yeah. to win your games? One of two, by the way, if it makes you feel oh, better. Oh, it does. It does. It makes me feel so much better. Well, it makes me feel better that it's not going to happen again. It's All like right. you're one of Evil Dragon and Nanta. It's only fair. In my defense, that is actually a two of. <laughs> oh, okay. Excuse me. Sorry. I'll I know you, you this, play two a, of a card so terrible. <laughs> it's a one of post-boarding. Uh, we'll go for a Zex here. <laughs> sure, Zex is fine. Okay, we've opened Zex three games in a row, so if we lose from this position, we're just bad. We are just bad. All right, I'm going to set three and pass it back. Clearly just a deck issue, not a skill issue, right? Yeah. Uh, fuck me, really? All right, main one. Okay, uh, what are the chances you have a meteorite back there? 100%? 200%. Excellent. That means you have two of them. Even better. Uh, all right, fuck it. Dark hole. Dark hole! <laughs> yeah. Let's run out Descendant. For sure. 15. Second main, I will set a card and I will set a mystery card and throw <laughs> it to you. <laughs> Stand by main. Heavy storm me now, fool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ooh, I'll take I think you decks. should get that that MST. That that's definitely what you want. Uh, okay. So I cheated just a little bit last time. Uh, this Yagan is meant to be banished. Uh, and then we're gonna normal the uh Zex and we'll activate the effects. That's fine. Cheating and jank that would never happen. Yeah, truly. All right. So unfortunately we can't summon it this turn because we are under duality. So I'm just gonna try for it. I'll try this. We'll see D prison. Yeah, it's uh. Yeah, we knew that wasn't this. happening. We knew that wasn't happening. All right, I'll take three. It's fine. Uh, we'll set one back to you. All right, this is like what the deck should be doing. Let's go to main one and cry, most likely. I will... God, you play Nobleman, too. I will normal summon Recruiter and pass the turn. Well, that's pretty good. <laughs> I will draw for turn. Stand by me. I guess I just have to give it to you, right? All right, get him in there. Make the six. Trigger Recruiter. I think the logical choice is to probably get another Recruiter. Keep the cycling going. Yeah, we'll get that. If I could get Spy with Recruiter, we would be off to the races. Ooh. But unfortunately, that does not work. I think it specifically is designed to prevent that from working. Yes, exactly. Uh, main two will bring back the Yagen. Uh, I will set one back to you. We'll draw. Oh, that is the best draw in my deck. Great. Uh, okay, so four back row. Anyone's game. Normal Recruiter. That's fine. I'm just going to poke this to get it up. I'll put them back in your hand. I'll take six. Goes back to hand. And that's it. Stand by main. Uh, let's duality. Sure. I guess I'm getting Worm King. I, he's kind of crappy. <laughs> All right. Uh, we will use the power of Worm King. Uh, let's get him out of here. I'll normal summon him with one tribute. He has appeared. Uh, 1827. All right. Uh, we're on our last legs here. Uh, second main. I'll set one and... I mean, if you got a storm, you got a storm, baby. True nade. Oh, horrifying. I think I'm actually going to judgment this. Okay. I, <laughs> I will set a card. <laughs> Go ahead. All right. Draw for turn. Stand by main. You'd be uh, really nice if you use that Worm King to pop my field spell. I'd I'll appreciate it. Go for the monster. <laughs> it's the recruiter. God damn it. Oh, I just had all monsters. I had a spy. I drew a recruiter after searching a recruiter. And of oh course, the one oh, of Galdatron <laughs> back again. <laughs> oh my god. Um, uh, okay, well, this deck like competently did what it was supposed to in the third game, where you just have like a yeah. Zex and 10 back row and just never lose. Yeah, I mean, that's that's uh that's worms, baby. I mean, unfortunately, the, the deck just doesn't have really great ratios. Like you saw in games one and two, I was locked on so many monsters. You're on three Zex, three Yagen, which is like a 50% Garnet ratio. Uh, Carteros is the worst card in history, and it's happening <laughs> at a time when people are still sideboarding Noblemen of Crossout. Or like, maining uh, it in my deck's case. <laughs> a lot could go wrong here. I had to board out of some of the absolute... I can't describe these choices as anything other than pure cope. The double Worm King main, the double evil dragon Anatana main. <laughs> My god. Uh, post board, you know, a little more understandable, but woof. You and I were talking about it a little bit off camera as we were citing how we were sort of shocked how just more people didn't play like the Gear Town Gadgetron package. And it's like, in all fairness, I basically exemplified why you shouldn't ever play this package because. It's just awful if you have no other field spell or way to destroy the gear town, and you're going to draw a Gadgetron Dragon two out of your three games every time you play a match. But aside from that, uh, it is nice that at any point in this format that's like relatively 
like low power in terms of like the main monsters that are being played that you can just drop like a 3k dude out of nowhere like at any moment and like the deck space isn't really like that much of a big commitment for the payoff potentially especially yeah, like, if you're already is, playing like another deck with field spells this was a format where uh machina uh was actually a consideration right yeah and people were like eight star machine i can summon for free for my deck that blanks mirror force nah not worth my time <laughs> i have to play uh, you know the, the gravekeepers hilariously i think the thing that made gadgeltron dragon no longer a consideration is exactly what your deck is doing which is playing the malefic stuff like why devote all of this uh silly deck space to a combo that requires you to draw two field spells when if you draw one field spell you can just summon malefic stardust dragon and protect it as well or you can drop malefic cyber n which is bigger than gadgeltron dragon except it, it just doesn't have the protection when it attacks but 4k is quite sizable it was fun to see these two titans of the history of Yu-Gi-Oh, uh, which probably should have been in this series in the first place in all honesty but you know you convinced me to play uh worms once and you have clearly shown that the superior deck of choice from the uh clash of those two decks is in fact worms worms best deck 2011 uh undisputed it, fact yeah th sorry this this uh this episode was over as soon as you let me play worm i mean there's just no beating this deck uh, i don't know why everyone wasn't playing this in 2011 maybe they were stupid they didn't have enough faith to not draw double worm king couldn't tell you so guys, that's going to wrap it up for another video. I really hope you all enjoyed. Let's go ahead and shout out the patrons for all of their continued support. So shout outs to Shadow1317, Moto, Cameron Smith, Tim 0 x 3 MBT Play, Medulce, Ika, Iron Fang, Chaotic Meatball, Part 2, Pony Stark, Dan the Man, Hoban, Synchro Guy, I Ship, MBT, and Simo, Draconic, Rockslide, Jordan Coons, Iron Bladesman, Jesse Wood, Chris Hood, David Liu, Phoenix the Immortal, Sky Rose, Dylan Hunter, Cody Bretch, John Tubase, Extremely Vulgar Man, Brody Eastwood, Zerius Business, Carlos DT, Flannel Daddy, Hornet, TC Gaming, Thanks for the Sleeves Dad, MBT Caught Injecting his Fairy Lily, Matthew Brady, Max, the War Rock Investments Janitor, Valen Jackson, Twinkle Muncher, Eater of Crayons, Aren't You Glad I Didn't Say Alpha Tribute Benten, Luabon Yodabon, Helios 515, The Anti Big Brain, Ben K OTK Play, Simping for Simo, Mike Ty, Stolfin Amethyst, Tyler H, Nicholas Carpenter, Simo's Harem of Sexy Yugi Tubers, LGMBTQ, Nim Noodle, Malabranch of the Burning Tunnel, Stella and Zoe Vermillion, Wonder Waffle, James Keen, Skull Servant, and the Wandering Doomed or Boyfriends, MBT Cancel by All Community Soon, Cancel by All Committee Soon, Cancel by All Players Soon, not reading cards makes the game interesting and you know it. The Undertaker versus CMO and MBT. Wait, play the concert video one more time. Hunter Reed, TTV Shrugs IX, Cayman CJ, ITF, to Arc Echo, and Corvain. Thank you so much for watching the video, and we will see you next time.